Hi, this is Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextral Gunfighter Improvise, Adapt, and Overcome video session. Now this time we're going to look at the, the Trigicon ACOG, which uh, it's not a review on the ACOG per se. I absolutely love my Trigicon ACOG, uh, and I've got that originally on my uh, BCM uh, Recce, the AR platform, and it's now migrated over to my uh, my Desert Tech MDR. Now what I don't like about the ACOG is its mount. It has these huge big ass bulbulous protrusions on the side that they're the nut, the mounting nuts. They're big thumb nuts. Now I can kind of understand. Trigicon is looking at uh, they want to uh, prevent people from over tightening these nuts and uh, exceeding the parameters, uh, the, the specs of the, the Picatinny rail. The ACOG has big nuts that impede the ambidextral gunfighter when manipulating the weapon on the left side. Now on my BCM AR-15, I gave these nuts a pass, uh, but on my perfectly mirrored Desert Tech MDR, which is perfectly mirrored for the ambidextral gunfighter. The controls are perfectly mirrored from left and right. These nuts stand out in stark contrast to the smooth ambi, ambi efficiency of the MDR. The problem is, is that it is easy to bust a knuckle when char working the charging handle left side overhand, or break a fingernail when charging the handle, when using the charging handle underhanded. It disturbs the perfect mirroring and the zen flow of the ambi controls of Desert Tech's MDR. And while practicing doing mag changes and doing uh, work manipulating the controls on the MDR, I uh, finally busted my knuckle one time too many. And after spewing some brief vertriol, uh, praising these nuts, it was then I devised a plan. I've got to get rid of these ACOG nuts. I've got to castrate the ACOG. I searched the internet for a replacement base, looking for something, uh, something slimmer, a, fine, a tighter profile, a uh, better mounting system for the ACOG. Trigicon had nothing. They had their standard uh, big nuts, base plate. They also have some quick release base plates. Um, <clears throat> Geisley has a really cool uh, high precision base plate, but it still uses those same big ass nuts. Uh, Bo Bobro Engineering has some really cool quick detachable base plates, but again, they, the, the levers for the quick detach stick out on the left side about the same distance as those big thumb nuts. No one had a slim, unobtrusive, ambi mirrored base plate. I did find out, however, that the, the studs were five millimeter. The studs, the cross studs that hold the base plate onto the Picatinny rail are five millimeter. So I went searching for some uh, appropriate nuts to replace the big thumb screws. And what I discovered, to my surprise, was that uh, quadcopters uh, and and RC cars use these nuts uh, small five millimeter aluminum nuts to uh, mount their wheels and mount their propellers on our on, on the hobby in the hobby industry and it turned out that my son who has a lot of quadcopter stuff and builds quadcopters had a, a big selection of these five millimeter nuts so I got two of the aluminum nuts then they have a, a lock, a little a, a nylon lock ring in them. They also have a nice little flange on them, and um, but you know they're kind of lightweight. Will the aluminum nuts suffice? I can't say, but I do think that given the standard uh, for torque on even the big steel thumb screws is pretty minimal. Basically, you tight, you hand tighten them, and you go just a quarter turn beyond hand tight. So that's not a lot of torque. And the aluminum nuts seem to hold up fairly well for a decent amount of equivalent torque. Now will they hold up under uh, constant 
you know, recoil, I don't know. We'll just have to do some testing and I may just end up replacing them with steel nuts. Now the cool thing is by using these smaller tiny flat nuts with their flanges on them, I'm able to remove about just a little over three tenths of the stud, the cross bolt stud. Now when measuring to see how much you can cut off, you want to make sure and insert a uh, either mounted on the rifle with your pick rail or if you've got a just a little pick rail handy you can stick in there and to insert to kind of spread that uh, the clamp on the base so this because you can't just clamp it all the way down and cut your nuts off or you won't have or cut the bolts off you won't have enough uh, thread left so you stick the pick rail in there and then set your nut down next to the clamping piece and then measure from there to see how much you can cut off. And in my case, I found that I could cut off just a little over three tenths of an inch. I just want to make sure I don't cut too much. I mean, you, can't, you can always cut more. You can't cut anything back on. Then, once I got my measurement, I then used masking tape to mark how far down I can cut. And also, the masking tape is there to help protect the threads in case I, when I use the Dremel tool, I get a little bit off and strike the, the threads. I don't want to damage the threads. So it's a little bit of protection for that, too. So the masking tape helped to mark the location where the cut and to help protect the threads as I'm doing the cut in case I get a little off. Then we get serious. We get the Dremel, put on a nice uh, cutting blade, and start cutting those studs back. Now I like to wrap up the ACOG some with some paper towels and a little bit of uh, masking tape uh, just to keep it clean and prevent dust from getting everywhere. Of course the ACOG is capable of withstanding a lot more abuse than this but why you know endure too much cleanup afterwards. So I covered up my ACOG, taped it up a bit and then began the cutting with the Dremel. One thing I noticed is that the Trigicon does use some pretty good quality steel in that crossboat. It was not uh, an easy cut. It took me a few minutes for the Dremel to get through, even running at a fairly high speed. Now you do want to cool things down, maybe on occasion, to keep from affecting the temper of those crossboats. After the cuts are made, then I would polish up the the tips of the, the studs, uh, clean them up just a little bit, make them a little bit flatter, make sure that the threads were not damaged and so that uh, when I go to put the screws on they don't cross thread. So a little bit of cleanup and a little bit of polishing, a slight little bit of rounding of the tip so that there's not any sharp edges protruding beyond the nuts. And then once I'm finished with the cutting and the polishing with the Dremel, then I use one of the original nuts and thread it on to help clean up the threads and make sure that they're clean so that when I thread up those aluminum nuts, I don't damage the threads on those. I then applied a tiny dab, a tiny dab of anti-seize on the threads so that there would not potentially be any galvanic corrosion between the aluminum nuts and the, uh, the steel studs. Now, if you replace the nuts with steel nuts, then you have to, maybe you don't have to do that step. might just use some Loctite. Now we are ready to mount the ACOG back on the MDR. Now you want to push a little bit of tension towards the front, towards your muzzle on the ACOG, shifting it so that the, 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 the tabs on the Picatinny rail are supported in the front. So it's, when you recoil, there's not any slack to take out. So you've got the ACOG pushed a little bit towards the muzzle. Uh, we tighten down the nuts, hand tighten them, and then we use an eight millimeter socket, in this case, to uh, tighten down the nuts. Now I tighten down just carefully. It'd be nice to better use a torque wrench on these, it'd be ideal. But I tried to simulate what it would be like how tight it would be to get a uh, finger tight plus a quarter turn on, on the big thumb nuts. Now you can see that I can operate the charging handle on the left side without any significant interference. It's much more like the right hand side of operating the charging handle. Uh, it appears I will no longer bust my knuckles. It appears I will no longer break a fingernail off my pinky when I do underhanded charging. So this is a significant improvement. Now ideally the nuts would be flush, maybe countersunk on this that side bracket. But this is a pretty good improvise and adapt and overcome a solution to the ACOG uh, base and getting that slimmed up 
so that it's not interfering with operation, ambidextral operation of the weapon. Now the another advantage of cleaning this up and slimlining the ACOG mounting base is that you're not going to hang up your your rifle's not going to hang up as easily on webbing. For example, if you've got molly webbing on a, a chest carrier or your sling, maybe a web, uh, the web on your sling might hang up on those big giant ACOG nuts, those big thumb screws. So we've slimlined things down a bit to make that, uh, to reduce the risk of things hanging up there. So, until someone comes along and makes a nice, slim, unobtrusive, ambi friendly base plate for the ACOG this is one way to get there it's maybe not the ultimate best solution but it's our improvise adapt and overcome solution for the ambidextral gunfighter thank you for watching the video if you like this video and want to see more please like share and subscribe